Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining. So, um, today I am going to be painting a flamingo. And I'm going to try to do this in a fairly short amount of time. And hopefully this can be helpful to you if you want to paint as well. I'm going to start with the wonderful S shape. And I will be moving my um, paper as I paint so that you can see the different sections. I don't have room to put my camera up higher, so we're going to do it this way. So, basic S shape. And we're just going to go with the basic shapes. to erase the extra lines that I do not want to follow now that I have my sketch ready. I am using a watercolor paper, actually a size A3, that would be kind of similar to a 11 by 14 when it comes to inches in standard formats. All right, so here we go. This is my sketch, sketch done in five minutes here. And that's all we need to start. I'm gonna be using um, Kohinoor Brilliant Watercolors, the basic palette. You see that I've kind of run out of some colors, but that's fine. And uh, here's another palette. This is a big one, um, but I'm only going to be using pink from here because this palette doesn't have pink. I'm going to be using this pink. Um, 
I'm going to start with just making my paper wet right where I'm going to be painting the pink flamingo. Now depending on what watercolors you have, um, you don't have to worry if you don't exactly have pink, you can do it with just red. Flamingos come in a variety of tones, so that's fine. Alright. This is pretty good. I'm actually going to use the bigger brush. Over here on the body and the wing section. So the paper is a little bit wet and ready for the first color application. We're gonna go with a very light pink in the beginning. So um, here is where I'm actually going to just get my paint ready, very light. If I didn't have this, I would grab some color from here and grab some color from the other one. Put a lot of water in there. And just prepare my first pink wash. And here we go. It's light. And I'm just going to apply it everywhere. I can see that my paper is getting a little wet in some sections, so I'm going to do my best to be quick. Maybe I'm going to pause right here. This is where shadow is going to be, so that's kind of going to help. And let's go into the vegetables and the shadows here. I'm going to grab a little bit more red. I don't have a lot of it in there, so I'm just gonna grace it <laughs> this way. There we go. That's nice. I'm gonna apply it around the eye. And the cheek. more red. Right here, this is where the shadow of the flamingo's head is. We're gonna let that be, and we're gonna go down here and continue doing the same thing. I'm gonna go with the light wash and apply. I might do the same thing and go ahead with the big brush.
one's better. So if you are watching, thank you by the way, why don't you let me know in the chat where you're from? Some more water because I kind of used it up. And I'm going to add my bread. Look at that. Drip. And I'm going to add this right here. This is my egg. And I'm having drips. That's okay, we're gonna fix that. Here we go. This is where the shortest feathers are, so I'm gonna make small strokes. Look at that, I had some other color squeeze in there. Gonna have to clean it up. Quickly refill. I'm kind of going under the feathers. Um, so I am using a Kohinoor watercolor. I got this in the Czech Republic. This is where I am. And um, I would say... Um, what was the name of it? Um, Kansen. Kansen XL is my favorite by far, my mom favorite watercolor paper. It's more um, heavyweight than this one. I think this would be about 200 grams, 300 grams is better. I'm getting more curving of the paper here, but it's okay. It works and it's not gonna be a problem. Gonna come back to this section and add some darker areas. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and switch the brush from my large one that was a number 10 to a number four. And then bring in a little bit of red, a little bit of pink. And I'm going to add some brown for my shadows.
sorry, that's like really reflecting the light, but when it dries, it'll be, it will be a little bit easier to see. Just gonna dab a little bit along the way, because there's a lot of short feathers. is good. The natural shape of the brush will do its thing as well, so you know, to actually do it better this way. That's a really hard line. So with a clean wet brush, well, damp brush, I'm gonna go over it. It's gonna give it a little bit of texture. Same right here. Now with watercolor, you can you can be a detailist, but because this is not a pencil, it's a brush and watercolor really does kind of its own thing. Don't be too perfectionist. Don't be too, 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 too particular. And just allow it to do its own thing. And see how <laughs> beautiful that comes to be when you allow it to do that. I need to clean my water. There's a bit of puddle where I don't want to have a puddle. Also, I use paper towels. A dear lady from the church um, took me to an oil painting class. It was a weekend class. And that's where I learned the power of the paper towel. <laughs> and it's really good for drying the brush and kind of raising water from places where there shouldn't really be too much water and all of that. So that's helpful. There we go. We need the water. Not there. And repeating the process. Good. Pink. Give me more pink. That looks better. And sorry, there we go. Brown. And I'm really bad at holding this in the right place. My water keeps running away from me. Alright. And we're gonna go back in. And give it more. Actually, I want it even a little bit darker. Not there. This is still a little bit of it. And like, when you see this, I'm not extremely particular about creating exactly the same color every time either. And that kind of gives it a nice balance of colors. So it's not a bad thing at all. There. I'm gonna dab it just a couple of times. Oh yeah, thank you. Thank you, Adrian. Yes. 
um, it always has its um, odd stage <laughs> where it's kind of flat and um, just kind of too ordinary and not awesome to look at, but it does gain the dimension and everything as we go. Okay, let me see. Bring my water back. Bring my brown back. And right here, I'm going to create a heart shadow. I'm not going to wash this one out. Go ahead and do the beak and then we're gonna go to the rest of the body I don't want this to be brown this is where I want a more more pink tone pure pink for my round palette. There we go. Now I'm going to add a little bit of red. Touch that a little bit. Bring it down here to the side. But I actually don't want it so dark. So with a dry brush, I'm going to lift, lift the color up. There we go. That's going to be better. Same thing right here on the top. Always a clean brush. It's lightly dried. It can be damp a little bit, but not too much. That's better. That's, this is fine because when all of this dries, this part right here, sorry, this part right here is going to be black, so this doesn't bother me right now. Okay, right here I'm going to add a little bit of brown for the shadow. I mean, this brown is rich, but it takes time to get. From the little cup. Okay. Using the size of the brush because it's nice. I don't like drawing with a brush. <laughs> I like that I can use the size and everything about it. It's pretty cool. Makes it easier actually. And I'm gonna touch this with a little bit of black. Actually, I didn't even go for rich, rich black. I just touched the black in the palette, and that's good. Just a little bit. a little bit of drawing 
a little brush later when we come to the finer details as you can see. No, that's kind of too dark. I'm gonna lift it straight out of there. The paper towel doesn't kind of disgusting, so I'm not gonna use that probably again. But here we go. This there. Yes, I touched it with my finger. Okay, this is still a little bit too wet. I'm gonna wait for that to dry, and we're gonna go down lower. And again, we're gonna um, go into the mid-tones, into the darker areas again. So I'm adding, adding, adding my brown. And more pink, there we go, that's a nice rich color. Now the feathers don't always go exactly um, the same direction, so having these lines go in different directions makes it look more natural. Again, this is the section with the very short, fine, soft feathers. So that's why this looks the way it does. wash this out a little bit more. This section could use that. Hey, thank you, Brian. <laughs> I appreciate it. I have always loved art. And I have taken a lot of extra classes, so I know I'm, I, I just definitely have um, more class time behind me, which I'm super grateful for. Um, definitely taught me a lot about how to look at things and how to see detail and just appreciate everything that I see around me and 
that's the beauty of it. And so I can definitely look at a lot of things and see it through the eyes of an artist. And I like that. <laughs> I like that a lot. And um, I use it then either for art or when I go out and take pictures of nature and when I see different things, I just really enjoy that. Just kind of capturing, capturing what I see and what I find beautiful or interesting in some way. But I will definitely say, um, after meeting a couple of people that deem to have no previous experience, like no training, no nothing when they were kids and they were like not considered talented, that they started taking classes as, you know, adults, young adults or adults. They, uh, I was actually quite amazed at how amazing they were. And um, just seeing that a lot of that has to do with the technique and how they are taught. And uh, I come from a pretty traditional teaching, learning background. And um, then in America, I was introduced to all these like other ways and then just the freedom that art making really provides. And I loved it. Because even for me, even if I have talent and some skill, I was so perfectionist. And to me, so many things just weren't good enough because either I wasn't good at the technique or something and it was just growing so much frustration in me and so many times I would put things off not finish them or just you know be too opinionated about my own things um but regardless of that I did learn so much through high school I chose an artistic school and I was actually learning fashion design so if you check out my channel you're gonna see um, portraits and a little bit of like fashion illustration and stuff like that so that's what I did a lot I mean we had 16 hours a week of art in you know various forms so that <laughs> that was the coolest thing can't complain about that and one thing that really helps me um, since I don't I don't do this as a full-time you know job or anything um, it's my hobby but I learned to work fast we had these crazy challenges and I'm sure they're not unique but we had crazy challenges where we had to learn how to capture a silhouette plus additionally you know a variety of details of a figure in a matter of first 20 minutes and then 15 and 10, five minutes, and it just, <laughs> it got crazy at, time, at times, but it was really, really awesome. So mm, I think that taught us, not just me, but the class, to see what's important, what's essential, depending on what you're trying to capture. So that was really, really awesome. And I'm very thankful that that's in my background. And then I started discovering, again, just the freedom that art provides and the creativity and the difference between uniform, uniform art, should I say it that way, and just pure, free, fluid creativity. So I do stick to a lot of what I learned. But I also don't feel the need to apply every step by step anymore because it's just kind of in my head now. And I can kind of think with it without having to apply it on paper anymore. So that's also really, really helpful. But I know that that comes with continuous practice and intentionality. So guys, if you are watching, I don't know how many people exactly are watching right now because sometimes my numbers lie a little bit. If you are watching, let me know if you have any art training and if you do, what's your favorite thing to draw or paint? Perhaps um, your favorite 
mediums, techniques, whatever it is that you like the most. Or if you don't have much experience there yet, what is it that you would like to learn if you have the chance? Just anything. Wow. Still watching. Thank you. Sorry there. Seem to have been some kind of a glitch in the connection. I don't live in a place with very good connection, so this is also sort of a test to see if I can even count on this connection to do live streams more often. We've been on for 39 minutes. I was definitely hoping that I was going to get this down in less time. But again, it's okay. There we go. I added some purple, it's a darker shade purple, to this thing. Oh, from England. Hello. I have some family that lives there, and I visited about 12 years ago, and it was wonderful. Loved it. Spent a couple of days in London. Just on the bus going from place to place. That was great. And then um, with my family, who lived there, uh, went to see the Jurassic Coast. And that was awesome. Definitely one of the most memorable things I have ever done. All right, I'm just dabbing crazy over here. Dab, dab. Different kind of dab. See now this brush is super dry, but it's great because it does add a very subtle texture. Like you can see there's not even like running <laughs> paint over here anymore, but it's enough to do this. So that's what I'm doing over here. It may look messy, but it's pretty great. All right. It's not going to end with this bird in the middle of white space. So um, let's keep going. Robin Hood's Bay, East Coast. Okay, I have not been that direction. I have visited Bournemouth and Pool, I believe, at that time. And... Hmm. prior to that, like a long time ago now, I went as far as Liverpool? I think so. Whitehaven was one place that sticks out to me because I had a friend, little girl like me back then, and we went out for a walk at a time where, well, let's just say the tide took all of the water away and I mean I've never seen boats and boats and boats in mud <laughs> so that was different but that was memorable I don't remember much else of the trip other than it was a singing trip my dad was a choir director so we did a lot of touring that was pretty awesome thanks to that I visited a lot of places around Europe and even the US so that was awesome. But Robin Hood's Bay, I'm gonna have to check it out. Okay, so we have a load of lovely mists over here. And it does look a little bit messy, maybe too messy, but that's okay. All right, let's hurry up a little bit. Mm, smaller brush, I'm going 
going to use, you know what, the smallest one, zero. And we're going to go from zero to hero on this guy. The yellow eye. Where is the shadow? We're gonna let that dry. Now we're going to add more black and more black and let's go to the beak. That's the first thing. We make the beak. beautiful thing about the beak is That is very important. I'm gonna rinse that so that it's just grayish. Add some details. The beaks usually aren't that smooth. There are some lines, scratches, even dents. with up here. If you ever notice on this section over here on the beak, a lot of times the birds have these wrinkles. And then feathers, very fine little hairs. Good. There we go, that's starting to look like the beak. Okay, this doesn't look much like a shadow anymore, so I'm gonna make it look a little bit darker. Some black and some purple. Areas. There we go. And I'm going to keep this right here. And the 
let's paint the background. This has taken way too long. So I'm gonna end this as soon as possible because I have to go. I have a little kids here that are about to need attention. So let's see what's the best. That's it for that palette. And now I have this lovely color over here that I'm going to implement. That's this. And I'm gonna put it in a couple of places and then I'll show you what 
what's going to happen next. It's going to look a bit crazy right now, but it's going to make sense soon enough. to keep up with the video where I am. There's two things. Now I'm in a hurry. <laughs> and it's just a very small video range over here. Alright, that can go to the side. And now back to my big Windsor and Newton. Brush. Okay. Not very good. Because I really like the big thick marks over here. A little bit more color, so it kind of does its own thing again. That's the nice thing. And all the way down here is where it's going to start. Where do I go? This is what it's looking like right now. What I'm going to do still is, uh, I don't know if I can get it right now during this session, but the final um, picture, final artwork will be on my social media platforms. So if you want to see what it looks like at the end, You can find Kate Holloman very easily on Facebook and on Instagram. So all of this is going to be there. The last thing I'm going to do right now. Touch up this right here. Go in a little bit with their wear. feathers. That helps. Same thing over there. And in a couple. There will be a little bit more of that later, but for now, I think this is where I'm going to leave it. So thank you guys. Thank you very much for watching. I'm not going to do this anymore because I do have to end. Um, when all this is dry and it can be touched again, I'm going to go in with the last bit of detail. And that's gonna be a uh, fine tip block marker and a white gel pen. And then I'm gonna show you the result on my Instagram and my Facebook this weekend. So thank you, have a great weekend and see you next time. Bye.